I have been doing HVAC for about 10 years now, and one frequently asked question that I get is, what is the difference between an air handler, an air conditioner, a furnace, a heat pump, a geothermal heat pump, and a mini split, and etc. So I thought, you know what, I'm gonna sit down and make a list of all the different type of HVAC units, all the different styles and formats that are out there. When my list got to 15, I realized that there's actually a lot of them out there. So I just wanna let you know that in this video, I'm only gonna cover 15, but there are a lot more. If you know any of them that I missed, or if you have something to add to whatever I'm saying, please do so in the comments below. Number one is an air handler. And this unit is quite simply a unit that handles air. In simple terms, an air handler is simply a big metal box with a blower motor inside of it. The purpose of this unit is to simply blow air in the building or the facility that it's in. Oftentimes, this metal box is gonna look like a furnace, but it doesn't have any of the heating components inside of it. Its main purpose is literally just to blow air. Number two is a straight air conditioner, also known as a split system. And the reason they call it a split system is because you have a unit outside called the condenser unit, and you have another unit that is inside called the evaporator coil. These two split up units are connected together by copper pipes that have refrigerant in them. And with the help of this refrigerant, heat is absorbed from inside the house and brought outside and rejected into the air. And the fact that it's a straight air conditioner simply means that there is no heating inside of the house. So in a setup like this, the air conditioner would be paired with an air handler. So the AC does the cooling and the air handler distributes the cool air throughout the house. Number three is a forest air furnace. A furnace that looks like this is simply an air handler that has heating components added to it. A furnace, just like an air handler, has a blower motor inside of it that circulates the air inside of the house, but it can also heat this air using some kind of a fuel source, either oil, natural gas, propane, or it can be electric. Which brings us to number four, a complete HVAC system. HVAC stands for heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. So if you combine an air conditioner split system with a furnace, that gets you an HVAC unit. So number four is an air conditioner paired together with a fossil fuel furnace, which can be oil, natural gas, or propane. Number five is the same exact thing, except the air conditioner is paired together with an electric furnace, which does not require any kind of venting, any kind of chimney or PVC pipes going out the house. Instead of using a flame like a fossil fuel furnace, an electric furnace uses a heating element to heat the air. Next up is a small duct high velocity system. This is very similar to a regular HVAC system, but it's usually used in homes where there's not enough room for the big metal ducts that are usually used. Instead of those, they use small round ducts that are spread out throughout the house into every single room. And the vents, instead of big nice grills, it's just a little circle. And the reason it's called high velocity is because the air rushes out of there a lot faster than the usual type of vent that people would normally have. My experience with these kinds of systems hasn't been really good. Most of the units that I went out to, they make a slight whistling noise because of the high pressure air, even though they're supposed to be quiet units. And another thing that is kind of bad is instead of a big vent that spreads out the air kind of evenly, you got this little one that blows out air at a high speed into one area. So the air is not heated as evenly, making little hot spots. But if you have a high velocity system like this, please do let us know what you feel about the system. Do you like it? Is it not that bad? Or would you rather have something else? Number seven is a heat pump. A heat pump is very similar to an air conditioner, except it can reverse the flow of refrigerant inside of it. So generally, an air conditioner just takes hot air from inside the house and dumps it outside. But a heat pump, it can reverse the flow and take hot air from outside and bring it into the house. If you want to know more details of how exactly an air conditioner is different to a heat pump, I have a video where I talk about the heat pump components and the components that are in a heat pump that an air conditioner does not have. In that video, I explain all of that. So if you're interested, check that one out. A heat pump can usually be paired together with an air handler because this unit can do both heating and cooling. But depending on what climate you live in, if it gets really cold in the winter, then the heat pump starts to lose efficiency. Usually they work pretty well until about 15 degrees Fahrenheit. 
If it goes lower than that, especially if it goes below zero, the efficiency of the heat pump drops drastically to the point where they're almost useless. This brings us to number eight, which is a hybrid split system. That's when they combine a heat pump with a forest air furnace. These kinds of systems will also have a different kind of thermostat. A usual thermostat has heat, cool, and fan only. But a hybrid system will also have a fourth option, which is emergency heating. Hybrid systems are usually set up to switch automatically between the heat pump and the furnace. So for example, they're gonna be set up where if the temperatures outside go below 20 degrees, the heat pump will turn off and the furnace, whether it be fossil fuels or electric, the furnace will turn on instead to heat the home. Once the temperatures outside go back up, then it will revert back to the heat pump to heat the house instead of the furnace. So a hybrid split system is basically a heat pump with an emergency heat backup. Number nine is a ductless mini split. These things are pretty cool because they can be installed just about anywhere. The coolest thing about mini splits is that there is no ductwork needed. The way they work is they have a condenser unit and then refrigerant lines that go straight into a cassette. The cassette combines a blower motor and the evaporator coil into one thing that either hangs on the wall on the floor, or it can even be ceiling mounted. The only downside of this is that it does not cool the entire house. It only cools the room where that cassette is in. So if you have a bigger house with five or six bedrooms, then you're probably gonna need multiple heads or even two mini splits to be able to cover the whole area because every single room is gonna need its own cassette or indoor unit. But another good thing about mini splits is that most of them are heat pumps, so they can heat and cool your house. If you have experience with both the traditional split units and mini splits, it would be awesome to hear from you what the difference between the two is and which one you like better. Moving on, we have number 10, which is a floor mounted air conditioner, also known as PTAC. These units are pretty much extra large window air conditioners, except instead of going through the window, they are placed on the floor and go out the wall. A lot of hotels and some apartment complexes, especially those with a lot of condos, will have these kind of units in every single apartment. It's very easy to tell if a building has these kinds of units in it, because if you look at that building, the hotel or apartment from the outside, you're gonna see a bunch of the condenser coils all over the wall. Number 11 is a package unit. With this one, they take a forced air furnace and combine it with a split air conditioner put it all together and package it into one unit. I've worked on a bunch of these and usually I only see these in apartment buildings. Next up, we have rooftop units. A rooftop unit is pretty much the same exact thing as a packaged unit, except they take this whole big box and put it on top of the roof. This is the most common setup in commercial buildings, stores or restaurants. So they have everything on top of the roof. The only thing that's going inside is the ductwork. So they have a return going down and a supply going down, and that's it. There's no fans or anything inside. It's all up on top of the roof. Number 13 is a boiler, which only heats the house. It does not do any cooling, but it's quite a bit different than a forest air furnace. A forest air furnace has ductwork that blows air through it. A boiler has water that it distributes in pipes all throughout the house that goes to radiators or baseboards. Instead of a blower motor like a furnace has that circulates the air in the house, a boiler circulates water throughout the pipes in the house back and forth. A lot of people like water heat more than forest air heat because it's a lot more comfortable. The blower on a furnace, it makes a lot of noise. You can hear the air whistling all the time and it stirs up a lot of dust. Whereas the radiators on a boiler, they radiate or give off heat. There's no blower fans involved. So it's less noisy and there's less dust that is stirred up. But let's move on to number 14 and that is in-floor heating. This is the most premium and the most comfortable source of heating that you can get. So what they do is they use a boiler, but instead of the water being pumped to radiators or baseboards, the water is pumped in loops underneath the floor in the whole house. With radiant floor heating like that, all the floors in your house are gonna be nice and warm, regardless if it's tile or wood. Heat naturally rises, so as the floors are getting heated, the heat naturally rises up and it evenly heats the whole space of the home so you don't have any cold or hot spots. It's the most comfortable type of heat. And the cherry on top is that it's practically invisible and soundproof. 
There's no vents, there's no radiators, and you can practically hear nothing. It's just invisible, but the whole house is nice and warm. Rich people that live in cold climates take this a step further, and they put radiant heating like that in their driveways as well. So when there's snow or ice, their driveways thaw out and they're nice and clean all the time, even if there's two feet of snow on the side. And last but not least, we have a geothermal heat pump. I have not worked on too many of these units, so I don't have much experience with these, but basically a geothermal heat pump is the most unique animal out of them all. They combined a heat pump with a water pump. A heat pump usually transfers heat using air, so it absorbs and rejects heat using air as the medium. Whereas a geothermal heat pump, they add a water pump and they put a loop, pipes inside of the ground that absorb and reject heat using the ground instead of the air. Temperatures inside the ground, about 10 feet deep, are usually pretty steady at about 55 degrees Fahrenheit all year round. A geothermal system takes advantage of that and uses the ground temperature instead of the air, which makes things a lot more efficient. So for example, a traditional heat pump that uses air to transfer heat, if it's 100 degrees outside, that's not very efficient because the air outside is already super hot and you're trying to take hot air from indoors and bring that outside. Whereas if you're going to use the ground temperature, which is about 55 degrees, that is a lot more efficient. It's pretty complicated to explain the efficiency science behind a geothermal heat pump, but the key takeaway, in summary, the geothermal heat pump is the most efficient out of all the HVAC units out there by a long shot. It costs very little to run it, but at the same time, it's very expensive to install it initially. So personally, I don't think the efficiency is worth it, but maybe I'm wrong because I don't have much experience with geothermal. If you have one of these units or if you've had one before, it would be interesting to know what you think and what your experience was with that unit. And that is all I had for you today. If you know of any other HVAC systems that I missed, do let me know what those are. I'll see you next time. My overweight grandpa started walking one mile a day when he turned 80. He's 82 now and we have no idea where he is.